The name Victor Goyokarez continues to pepper our social feeds. And there's been a few updates regarding the Swedish striker this week. Not only that, but the international break is finally over. But it didn't come without a bit of a hit to Manchester City. Meanwhile, Arsenal remain unscathed. And there's some big congratulations to be given to one of our key defenders. This is the Arsenal News Show. Hello and welcome to the Guna Talk. Back again with you guys for another episode of what is the Arsenal News Show. Joining you every single morning at 8am UK time. Thank you so much as always for joining me. It is an absolute pleasure and honour to always host the show this morning and be joined by so many fantastic people in our live chat box. Speaking of which, good morning to Blackshine, to Louis, to Martin, Carl, Robert, Damien, Stevie, Matt G, Amira, Mr. Ria, Silky. Uh, Ismail, Franklin, Temi, Daniel. Uh, we've got uh, Daniel, uh, another Daniel as well. Uh, Kaiser, Glenn, Vivian, Kevin, Stephen, Darren, NSW, and plenty more of you guys and girls as well. Thank you so much, as always, for tuning in and making this a part of your morning routines. Um, if you could drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here with those notifications turned on so you never miss a show, that would be incredibly appreciated as we continue to try and reach 1K every single day. And I just would like to say um, a big thank you to everybody that continues to help us out and watches these videos because for the first time in 2024, I'm not sure if this is the first time in a few years, but the first time in quite some time, our video from five days ago, the episode 434 on YouTube, which doesn't count obviously the uh, the audio side of things, reached 30,000 views, um, which is incredible. So thank you so much to everybody that's continuing to support the channel, that's continuing to grow our amazing community here, um, which is obviously based upon the idea that all of you are very much welcome if you're willing to be happy and respectful as per. And uh, it does show, you know, the channel is clearly moving in, in a great direction with so many of you here to support it. So thank you for that. Um, Eamon says, which Arsenal shirt am I wearing? Well, Arsenal released a, a new range, as you come to expect pretty much every week. They launch a new range. But uh, uh, some brand new retro gear uh, was released on the Arsenal website. And I did quite the like the look of, uh, of this one, uh, which is the 1985 Centenary Year uh, remaster, I would assume. Um, and it's, it's very nice. Um, so thank you for asking, Eamon. Uh, it is very nice indeed. It's available on the Arsenal websites and knowledge says but how many likes did that video get i suppose we can have a look how many likes did that video get um the thirty thousand one. one i've lost it now uh one and a half thousand uh likes which actually ironically wasn't as many likes as we got on episode 437 which got 1900 likes uh, despite not having as many views on it i don't know how the youtube algorithm works but it's a crazy crazy place um let's jump into today's story shall we we start uh, with a big congratulations to Jakob Kivior. Can we get that going in the chat box, please? A big, big clapping of the hands to our Polish defender who qualified for the European Championships this summer with Poland, um, the likes of Robert Lewandowski, of course. However, real heartbreak for Aaron Ramsey's Wales, um, who reached a penalty shootout to, after beating Finland very comprehensively. Um, and it looked as though maybe Wales might do it. Um, but sadly, for them, and obviously positively for Jakub Kivior, um, Poland ended up going through on penalties, a flawless victory in the penalty shootout. Dan James, formerly of Manchester United, missing his penalty, uh, the decisive penalty in the end, uh, which sent Poland to the tournament, along with Ukraine, who knocked out Iceland, and for their first European Championship ever, the very well-named Georgia, um, of course, as well, knocking out Greece. Um, commiserations to Harry Simeu and our good friend Sophie as well. Sadly, Greece not reaching uh, the European Championships. And I, I have to agree with, with Harry's tweet I saw yesterday. If you are um, of Greek heritage, you'll be looking at that, that run and thinking, how on earth did, how did Greece not qualify for the European Championships? this summer but it will be georgia going through big congratulations to them um and moving continually forwards to the end of uh what is going to be a a very exciting season going into that european championships what this means is that we've now got all six groups confirmed for the european championships group a 
is Germany, Scotland, Hungary and Switzerland. Group B is Spain, Croatia, Italy and Albania. Exciting one that. Group C is Slovenia, Denmark, Serbia and England. Group D, Poland, Netherlands, Austria and France. Another very interesting group there. Group E, Belgium, Slovakia, Romania and Ukraine. And Group F, Turkey, Georgia, Portugal and Czechia. There's a really good opportunity, I think, for an underdog in that group to go through, you'd expect, with Portugal. So very interesting uh, tournament to be excited by. And we'll, of course, be doing plenty of content around the European Championships as the tournament goes on with our daily 8am shows as well. Now, finishing off the international scene, Rice completed yet another England fixture as captain, um, but frustrating to see him play two full matches before this game against Man City, despite the fact they were both friendlies. Equally so, it was frustrating to not see Aaron Ramsdale given an opportunity, Gareth Southgate using Jordan Pickford. For, but I mean, what is the point? Like, seriously, what is the point? I'm not going to go off on a rant about Southgate again. I've do, done too many of those during this break. Um, but yeah, goodness me, that man. Uh, William Saliba, meanwhile, played uh, for France and Havertz played in their 2-1 win over the Netherlands. Germany looking good, you know, for a team that really were in the mire under Hansi Flick. I tell you what, for the fans that wanted Hansi Flick to come into Arsenal... You know, really do please go back and look at his record with Germany um, because, my goodness me, there was questioning even from a video of, of Joshua Kimmich you may have seen doing rounds uh, in the last 24 hours or so on social media uh, being questioned by his own players as to the kind of tactical decision-making. Um, but Havertz and Germany looking very, very good indeed. Uh, Odegaard also played but substituted for Norway around the 76th minute, I believe. And Trossard came off in the game against England but he wasn't injured either. So there's some really positive stuff. There was also quite a funny video of Rice and Trossard speaking at the end of the game. The camera kind of goes up to Rice and Trossard and Rice catches a glimpse of the camera and is like rolling his lies. Like, just give us a sec, please, mate. Just give us a sec. Maybe they were talking about this, which is John Stone's injury adding to concerns ahead of Arsenal's game against City this weekend, uh, it looks as though he perhaps has suffered something of a, a deductor issue, maybe. I saw a couple of tweets about that uh, last night, in which case very difficult to maybe recover from for the game this weekend. So that is Carl Walker having issues, John Stones having issues as well, Manuela Kanji pulling out of Switzerland duty, despite the fact that Diaz and Bernardo Silva pulled out of Portugal, Portugal duty. That was just because they weren't expected to play in the final friendly. That wasn't injury related. Haaland, of course, as well, not uh, did complete uh, his duty with, with uh, Norway. I can see plenty of the chat box are thinking that he's faking it and he's going to be fine. I guess we're going to have to wait and see. Um, but without Stones and Walker, that's two big um, presences that they could indeed not have this weekend. We will wait and see and hear from Pep Guardiola at the end of the week. But our headline story of the day and returning to the world of transfers and... The sphere of Victor Goyokarez. Links continue to intensify. We've seen a number of outlets yesterday reporting Arsenal leading the race for the Swedish striker. Alex Crook of TalkSport reporting it. And Ben Jacobs of, uh, well, I, th I believe he's, he's, he's moved on with court offside. Um, I think he's, he's with them and doing a few other things as well in the world of football transfers. Um, so Ben Jacobs reporting that despite the fact that Sporting would be expecting that 100 million euro release clause, they may accept slightly more money to a better structured deal. When it comes to release clauses, clubs tend to have to pay the full figure up front, whereas they may accept slightly more money, but paid over installments and certain staggered payments, which obviously can help certain teams out. So that is certainly worth keeping your eyes peeled to. But this link to Victor uh, Oyokarez is very much um, an interesting um, it's an interesting saga that will continue to, I'm sure, pepper our feeds. Um, but Jokarez uh, is certainly a player that I think everybody should be looking at a little bit more intensely as the season comes to a close with 50 goal contributions, of course, already this season. He's my number one pick and has been for quite some time uh, to be the centre forward signing for the club in the summer to see what indeed he could achieve with a club like Arsenal. Um, but it's not just about transfers. It's not just about the big money that could be spent, of course, in the world of transfers, because we don't expect you to spend big money when it comes to keeping yourself safe online, because you can get a significant discount off a subscription of a one or a two-year plan with Nord 
VPN, the ability that keeps you safe online. Now, I should say, if you were in our Discord server yesterday, um, I don't think there was, I think there was somebody in that chat box, in that Discord server that, that didn't sadly have NordVPN turned on. And those pesky little trackers got inside them and affected their behavior in the Discord server yesterday. You'll only know what I'm talking about if you remember and in the, inside the Discord server. But had they had NordVPN, I don't think they would have ever had to worry about what happened in the Discord server yesterday because, of course, it can protect you from those pesky little peeping Todd Bowleys that like to have a look at our transfer targets. It can give you the superpower of changing your geolocation as well and hopping around the world with your digital devices like your laptop, your phone, and, of course, your tablet as well. Um, but if you're not happy with the service for whatever reason, you can get a 30-day money-back guarantee. So who can say any fairer of that? And I did promise you that after the William Saliva Prize ended yesterday, that I'd bring you a news or a brand new prize courtesy of Football Prizes, and I can indeed bring you that now. And if you are quick, uh, and you have to be very quick indeed, you can still get the early bird price that will be increasing uh, very, very shortly indeed. But there is already 123 tickets sold of this signed and framed Dennis Bergkamp shirt which also contains a built-in tv playing some of the players highlights not only that but there are plenty of instant win prizes to get involved with including a 25 pound arsenal club shop gift voucher a back four signed arsenal photograph which contains the likes of steve bold tony adams nigel winterburn lee dixon and of course a arson wenger signed arsenal shirt with a messy 22 years arson inspired uh signing on the back so do get involved link down in the description please do get lucky <laughs> and uh, let me know if you've been successful in any of our uh, prize draws with football prizes uh, ASAP. I'd love to hear if you could. Well, let's go to part two and your questions then right after this. Okay, um, part two. We're chilling. I've, I've actually, I'm trying to work out how I can sit more comfortably. I find myself like when I'm doing these shows, because I do have a, you know, a pretty long microphone stand, as you can see. I've had some people leave comments saying it covers too much of the screen. Well, I, I quite like sitting back relaxed uh, to do part two. And uh, I find myself leaning forwards to do the show too much, which really does not help my posture. So I'm going to be sitting back for some of these questions and trying to work out a more comfortable seated position for these shows, because I feel like I am I'm waking up in the mornings and my back is, is killing me. I think it's because I sit so far forwards doing these shows with so much of the day. So let's see if we can uh, have a more of a relaxed and, and laid back part two, shall we? Um, Lee says, I would like to thank Mr. Southgate most sincerely for giving Declan Rice over 180 minutes of football when the majority of the squad was rotated. Mm, indeed, indeed. Not, not great. Luke says, uh, big love to the channel as always, Tom. Hope you're well, mate. Thank you, Luke. Hope you are too, my friend. Uh, Damien says, that's called age. Yeah, your back hurting. It's, it's called age. But I don't think I help myself at all. I think my posture is, is pretty terrible when I'm seated usually. So, uh, yeah, knowledge says without the mic stand, it's not TGT. Indeed, indeed. I don't care how much. As long as you can see me, you can see all the stuff and you can hear me. That That's all that matters. Is it feng shui? Is that the how things are kind of placed around the house? Um, well, it's uh, it's helping me to, to sit more relaxed as well. Uh, input says the Rodegaard covers too much of the screen because Erdegaard covers so much of the pitch. My captain, indeed. I love that. Um, Praktika says, Hey, Tom, any comments about the recent allegations against Chelsea and Abramovich? Um, and over the years, he owns that club. What impacts would such acts have on football? I'm not well versed on the topic, to be honest, of the allegations that are in place. Them are. I did see. Uh, is it Marina Gran Granov Granovskaya? Um, the the one that was involved quite high up during the tenure of of Abramovich as could get called in as a potential witness in something allegedly. So, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Chelsea could face serious punishments if they're found guilty of any breaches, um, which of course would be quite damning um, based upon some of the things that I've read, but uh, I do need to get more. Frida says I need to get a better chair. Mikey says I need to try a standing desk. I've, I've, I've definitely, yeah. Abby says it's the chair. That's, it's just a classic kind of desk chair. I, I should invest in one of those gaming chairs, really, shouldn't I? That, that would probably be better for my back. Um, maybe that's the next thing I need to invest in 
for the office. Uh, Aaron says, do you think before the season is done that Arsenal will play Obi Martin? Um, think about how Yamal has a formula because of trying him. Do you think he can fit the Arsenal tactics? I'd, I'd be shocked, to be honest, Aaron. No, I'd, I don't think. He's not even played for the under-21s regularly yet. He's still an under-18s player. So, no, I don't think Obi Martin will be playing for the senior side anytime soon. Um, but uh, he's still an exciting player, one to keep an eye on, that's for sure. Uh, GZ4 says, game in chairs, ain't it, Tom? And I game heavily. Oh, I, I guess you have to give me some chair advice, people. Um, send me some links. And by the way, thank you to those of you that um, have sent me uh, a lot of, um, I had a fair few inquiries about people uh, curious about the merchandise thing. So I'll be in touch with some of those people over the next few days or so. I'm on annual leave in the next couple. So uh, uh, I should have more time to be able to... Uh, to attack those. Um, so thank you for those that did indeed um, uh, get in touch. Uh, Grantly Poo says, uh, Tom, do you think Nord will help out with Gorkarez, uh geolocate to Arsenal? Who knows? Maybe. Maybe. They're, they're capable of very, very good things. Uh, Jimmy says, I have dealt with office furniture and then feel free to get in touch. I can offer some advice on what is good for you. Jimmy, I, I have absolutely no way of getting in touch with you, but you certainly have a way of getting in touch with me. Uh, you can go to either of my social platforms on Twitter or Instagram or leave one of the comments down below in the comment section with how I can. And I'll happily have a chat about improving my deskware. Uh, Derek says, uh, Tom, I feel coy and players on Pep's instructions are dropping out. Uh, if that is the case, then they are fearful of Arsenal and look embarrassing on their side. I just can't foresee players dropping down injured in 20 minutes of games. I just can't see that. I really can't. I can't get it in my mind to think that that would happen. I really don't. Um, I, I just, I know the conspiracy theories. I absolutely get it. Um, but I, I can't see it. And now says, do you still sell the TGT hats? I wanted to get one. Well, hopefully soon we will. Um, once I've had a few of these chats with some of these merchandise um, distributors, maybe, uh, we'll be back selling some non-profit merchandise as well. Uh, Bizarre says, Tom, do you recall any Croatian players that played for Arsenal? Croatian players? Eduardo? Eduardo is the one that stands out the most. I'm trying to think if we had any others. Um, beyond that, I don't... I don't think so, beyond Eduardo. Um, Davos Suka, yes, of course. Great shout. Um, Suka came in as kind of our replacement for Anelka uh, in the late 90s, did he not? As kind of depth to that centre forward position. So Suka and, and Eduardo, beyond those two, um, don't think any others, unless another glaring um, absence in my memory. But I can't think off the top of my head of another Croatian player that we've we've had. Um Let's go to Jeremy says, I really feel like we aren't using Nelson as we should. Uh, he can be a great option when it comes to resting Saka. Maybe we could bring him on earlier in games. Uh, Arteta tends to like to keep the key players on the pitch as much as feasibly possible, doesn't he, during these games? Um, so, yeah, maybe that's true. I'll tell you what I could do. Uh, I can probably zoom in a little bit because I'm... Hold on. There we go. That's better. So I can sit back. And still, you can see me in filling up the screen even more. There we go. On the volley says, it happens, my brother. Tori's ACO in grand final, dying seconds of the game. Five seconds before the whistle was blown, he twisted his knee. And it shows anything is uh, is possible. Of course, you know, I, I, it does happen. Um, I've done my ACO in literally the last kick of a game playing indoor football. Uh, when I was at university, I was seconds before the game finished. And I tore my ACL. So, it, yeah, it absolutely happens. Um, Raditya says, trivia time, Tom. Who was the other Ukrainian that played for Arsenal? Um, was it Luzhny? Was Luzhny Ukrainian? I don't like this trivia testing of me. Um, was Luzhny Ukrainian? That's going to be... Yes, I think, it, I think that's right. I think that's right. Yes, thank you, chat box. I think you have... Uh, confirmed my suspicion so uh, Ole Yuzny uh, would have been my pick stop testing my Arsenal knowledge you go back far enough I am gonna fail just just a heads up on that um Ryan says thoughts on Deschamps comments about sleep we tackled them yesterday Ryan you can you can hear my thoughts on those 
in yesterday's show when we get to the Saliba section in part one. Uh, Vala says, I think we should sign Albert Goodmanson from Genoa. Four contributions against um, Israel and a goal against Ukraine last night, having quite the season in Italy as well. I, a player that I'd have to look in a little bit more to, Vala. Um, is there any bias there from yourself? <laughs> but uh, I think there are other players that are probably on Arsenal's radar. Uh, Jackie says, Tom, who would you play on the left if Martinelli is not match fit? Jesus or Trossard or Nelson? Can't rule out Nelson. I think I'd play Trossard. Um, I think that Trossard's our best finisher. Get him into a position where he can score and he usually takes it. Think about the Porto game. He didn't have particularly an amazing game, but you get him into those positions and he can be absolutely deadly. So I think I'd have to go with, with Trossard in the City game. Um, so yeah, there you go. Abdul says, Hey Tom, uh, Timber had an interview where he explained that Arsenal was speaking to him mid last season. I reckon those talks are happening with our targets now. Yeah, absolutely. They are Abdul. So, uh, unofficial talks go on all the time. I always say to people, go and watch, um, James McNicholas Gunner blogs video on how transfers work. Um, and he'll talk, he'll explain it perfectly for you better than I probably ever could. So, uh, yeah, unofficial talks go on. You know, all the time. There's always those rules about clubs getting annoyed at players being tapped up and stuff. You see it quite often. But in reality, there's loads of unofficial little things get, get kind of put around because clubs need to send the feelers out. They need to get a feel for whether or not a player is going to be keen on a move to the club in the summer. They need to get a feel for whether or not we're going to see, you know, movement from that player. If the club are open to, to selling them, if they've had offers from other clubs, what kind of wages they're looking at. Loads of unofficial go things go on behind the scenes. Um, let's go to Benny, who says, I think we should sign Diogo Costa as competition uh, for Raya and uh, a replacement for Ramsdale. I think you'd get, I think you'd find it very hard to convince Diogo Costa to join Arsenal because you wouldn't necessarily be guaranteed a starting berth in this team, but he is a fantastic goalkeeper. I was very, very impressed with him in the two legs uh, against uh, against Arsenal uh, in the Champions League. Um, let's scroll up a little bit more. Alvamod says, how many Swedish players have played for Arsenal? Um, Jumberg. Uh, does Christopher Olsen count? Did he make a senior appearance? Olsen. Um, other Swedish players. I'm probably forgetting something really silly. Uh, I'm trying not to look at the chat box now. Other Swedish players other than Jumberg and Christopher Olsen and I feel like there's a defender. I mean, Ibrahimovic had a trial at Arsenal. Um, yeah. Uh, Kalström. Kalström. Anders Limpar. I've interviewed him myself. Uh, so, yeah, there's two more. Um, is that it? That might be it. Jumberg, Limpar. Um, I've already forgotten Christopher Olsen and Kim Kallstrom are the, 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 the ones that I can remember. You can go into the women's team if you want. Alstedt and Blackstenius, of course. Rami Shaban, Seb Larson. Did Seb Larson play a senior game for Arsenal? I know he came through at the academy, but did he play a senior game? It's a bit like Christopher Olsen, isn't he? I'm not sure whether they played uh senior matches or not uh for the club, but um, there you go. Uh, Oso says, uh, Tom Isaac or Jokerez, um, which I'm now apparently pronouncing correctly. You don't pronounce the G, supposedly. Um, uh, I think I'd go Jokerez. Uh, I, Isaac's injury record is just not, doesn't convince me enough. Um, I think there's question marks about Joker, uh, about Isaac's injury record. So I lean towards Jokerez of the two. Uh, Bizarre says, how huge would a win be on uh, Sunday, Tom? I don't think I can stretch my arms wide enough to tell you how huge a win would be for Arsenal on Sunday. It would be monumental. Uh, by the way, if you haven't yet listened to my chat with Laura and Umar yesterday evening, I recommend you go and listen to that straight after you've listened to this show. We usually, we've we been doing quite a lot of shows in the evenings this week and last week, so there was another one for you last night. I don't know if we're going to have one this evening. Um, but there was one last night, um, so do go listen to that. We, it was dedicated to the City game. We talked all about lineups. We talked about what it means if we win, draw, or lose. We talked about injuries. We talked about loads. So, yeah, there you go. Um, let's go to uh, Nelson says, Tom had to look directly into the camera to say Isaac doesn't convince. I'll try and look up as much as I can. Um, I'm not always looking directly at the camera, but uh, I kind of look more at the screen. Um, it's, it's Isaac. 
does convince me in terms of his ability. I think he's a fantastic footballer. I think he's a brilliant, brilliant footballer. It's just between the two of them, Jokerez and Isaac, I, I think that there is something to be said about Isaac's injury record not necessarily being good enough. Uh, Dean says Stefan Schwartz uh, was Swedish as well. So there you go. Um, Bizarre says, what about Vlahovic or Ozimen? Probably, probably Ozimen um, of the two, but I think that's more because I think he's more available than, than Vlahovic. Uh, Lee says, Tom, on Sunday, do we go for it or do we take a cautious approach? I think we just need to be a bit of both, to be honest, Lee. I think you need to have the the bravery to go for it when you need to. But I think you need to have the street smarts, the savviness, if you like, to hold a result if we need to. I think we've got the ability to be able to do that. I think we've got the defensive record to do that. But there is going to be a lot of questions about Gabriel, Saka, Martinelli. Of course, Arteta takes his press conference on Friday. So there's a few questions to be had about that. Uh, Carl says, Tom, do you think a win on Sunday increases more pressure since the winning a title uh, becomes you must rather than we can? Um, and Kyle, uh, I think that the pressure of that, if we win on Sunday, we talked about this on yesterday's show. If Arsenal were to win on Sunday, for me, it is a must win in terms of the title. If Arsenal beat City, it is must win. I'd be so disappointed if we didn't win the league, if we win on Sunday. And th yes, that puts all the pressure on. Yes, that really does kind of put expectation. But I, I said it on yesterday's show. If Arsenal beat City and don't win the league, I think there's much more of an argument for a bottling than last season. I don't think last season was a bottling, to be honest, personally. I think there were so many mitigating circumstances that ultimately, you know, we couldn't deal with the fact that City just won and won and won and won and won. But if you beat City with nine games to go, you go four points clear of City with nine games to go, I think really you've got to look at that and think, absolutely, Arsenal should be, um, should be looking at it. Uh, Nelson says, Tom, which side of your family is Ugandan? Um, my mother's side, uh, not th directly, like through marriage. There's Ugandan connections. Uh, Rob says, any word on Jorginho's contract talks? I saw somewhere that they've broken down. I feel like it's worth holding on. Not what I've heard, Rob. Um, they're progressing. He's happy at Arsenal. Um, he's keen to stay at Arsenal. Uh, and we have an option of a one-year extension as well. So I, I've not heard that they've broken down at all. That's certainly not what I've heard. Um, Warren says, where do you think that Jared Bowen might go next? I'm not sure really, because Bowen, I mean, what, he's in his mid to late 20s, is he now, Jared Bowen? Uh, he's 27, mid mid to late 20s, yeah. I mean, he's 28 in December, but he's 27, so he turns 28. I think this is that this summer and next summer are the last two summers that Bowen's really got to probably find that next, that next step in his career. So I guess we'll have to wait and see on that. I don't think it will be Arsenal. Um, Ishan says, Tom, pressure makes diamonds. Champions League and Premier League. You never know, indeed. Uh, George says, Tom, do you think Saka's Nando's source of marketing is distracting him from the task on hand of winning a Premier League? No. <laughs> That's the answer to that one. Uh, Anne says, is it true we're looking at extending Partey's contract? Haven't heard that myself. Uh, Gutemar says, is it a setback? Timber has not been featured in training lately. He wasn't pictured in training that doesn't mean he's not there if he hasn't been training obviously it does raise something of a fear that he's not there um certainly when i look through the pictures of training yesterday it had me a little worried but you, it's impossible to know because we don't know what is and what isn't shown so it's difficult to make any kind of conclusions on that um but there, I, I guess there's justification for a fear of a setback but only if we get it confirmed by Arteta on, on Friday. Um, and as Simon says, I don't see that. Uh, we have the hardest fixtures and we literally lost to lesser teams and an easier running with 10 games to go last season. Sad, um, but we should keep our expectations low and enjoy it. I I'm not saying that you shouldn't keep your expectations low and enjoy it. But if you beat City twice in a season, you beat Liverpool and draw with Liverpool, you've got, what, that's 10 points from a maximum 12 against your two title rivals. You should be winning the league. Um that's just my opinion. It's not about trying to pile more pressure on. That's just my opinion. I think if you beat City twice and you beat Liverpool and you draw with Liverpool, um, you should win the league. It's just, just my opinion. You know, I'm not I'm not doing the whole raise your your, your standards sort of thing, but I, it is that is my view. If you win that game, we should win the league. Um, and I'd be expecting us to win the league if we do beat City. Certainly, I'd be very disappointed if we don't. If we were to beat City. 
Um, Lewis says, I thought he was a training video recently, maybe a bit further back. Yeah, I think that was a, a couple of weeks ago. Um, so obviously that's uh, that's something that we'll have to check up on as there's more that come out in the, uh, the kind of weeks to come. Uh, Tizer says, hi, Tom. Uh, what are the odds on Sporting allowing their prize defenders, Mano Diamande and striker Victor Jokeres, uh to lead the summer this, uh, in the summer? I think a higher chance. Sport, sporting, like other Portuguese teams, will sell if you get the right amount of money. Portuguese teams are, are very wealthy. They use it as a, as a business model. Um, they're always able to kind of bring through talent and sign talent as well. So, yeah, without question, they'll be very open to selling both of them in the summer if the right price comes along, as as always. Uh, Vala says, when does the summer golf tour start? I reckon that there won't be any time during the fixtures uh, in April. I'll get some golf in. Don't worry. Uh, and plus, we're getting to that time of year where the pitch and putts are going to be opening so I can get down there for a quick couple of hours and uh, and practice 18 holes of pitch and putt. That's the best way to get back into my, into the swing of it, if you like. Um, Bizarre says, is our remaining games after Man City going to be tough? Yes, we have the toughest run of the three teams after City. Uh, we have the toughest run now. It becomes significantly easier after beating City, if indeed we do beat them. Um, but otherwise, yeah. If we draw, I still think it's a good result, by the way. I don't think we I don't think we have to win to win the league. I think we can draw and still win the league, but it's obviously tougher. And um it doesn't open up that buffer that we'd quite like against City. Um a couple more before we wrap up. Uh Nell says, Tom, how many points do you think we take from our last games? It'll be tough to see. Whenever I do these things now, I just say maximum points, like because I just look at every game and think Arsenal can win that. Arsenal can win every game. That's how I feel about us now as a team. I think we can win every single. We've won every league game in 2024. So I look at that and think you've got you've, you've got to think we can win every game. You've got to look at every game as a, as a must win, as a can win. So it's difficult for me to say how many points do you think we'll take because I look at it and go, I think we can take all the points. Because I think we're that good. I think we're that good of a side. Uh, Tabani says, totally agree with you. 10 points from our direct rivals should count for something. Absolutely. Um, and JC says, there's 1,200 of you watching. Smash the likes. There's actually 1,358 uh, across all of our platforms. If you're listening on Twitter, please make sure you hop over to YouTube. Uh, you can join our chat box and ask questions and get involved with the Q&A as well every single morning. Uh, and if you are listening on YouTube, thank you. Please do drop a like. Help us to reach that. 1k every single day challenge that we continue to do all the way through to the end of the season who knows maybe into the indefinite future uh it's an amazing challenge that we continue to keep up and continue to smash uh so thank you for that and uh, of course if you're listening on catch up as well thank you you are appreciated do hop back to youtube and drop a like on the video and help us on our way to our 1k every single day challenge uh thank you so much everybody for watching uh, we are going to bring things to a close there um i'll be back tomorrow morning for sure i may be back this afternoon this evening depending upon if we sort out a show but most likely it'll be tomorrow morning bright and early once again at 8 a.m as we continue the build up the run up oh, it's it's getting scary now um with manchester city on sunday uh international break done finished players are returning today um, so we'll see them back at London. I was about to say London Colney, but the Sober Realty Training Center. Plenty to be excited about, plenty to be uh looking forward to. Please drop the like, please subscribe if you're new. Stay safe, stay well, stay happy and respectful. And as always, up the Arsenal.